In China, which is around the same size as the whole of Europe, there are many different human fossils, but there is not a universal classification for these fossils. While fossils from Europe that date to between 300,000 and 50,000 years ago are classified as Neanderthals, even though they have a high degree of variability, Chinese fossils from this time period are not categorized as a single species. Until now. A team of researchers has named a new human species that lived around 100,000 to 300,000 years ago in China. The species, known as Homo juluensis, sheds new light on the complexities of human evolution. The scientific name of the species translates to big-headed human. Until very recently, all hominin fossils discovered in China that did not match Homo erectus or Homo sapiens were lumped together. Compared to hominin fossils from Africa and Europe, the human fossil record in Eastern Asia is poorly differentiated and described. Although Homo juluensis is not widely accepted, the name is gaining popularity among experts. In looking at the mixture of traits present in these groups of fossils, the researchers decided in the paper that they represent a new hominin population for the region. Some researchers consider this a significant breakthrough, while others call it a nothing burger. In fact, one evolutionary biologist who preferred to remain anonymous said that naming a new species of ancient human is merely clickbait. Homo juluensis is an enigmatic and contested figure in the study of human evolution, but represents one of the many intriguing possibilities of ancient hominins in Southeast Asia. Though not formally recognized in the scientific community as a species, the designation Homo juluensis has emerged in discussions regarding early human migrations, local adaptations, and the fossil evidence in the region. In terms of size, their skulls measured 103 to 109 cubic inches, or around 1,700 to 1,800 cubic centimeters, which was significantly larger than Neanderthal's 88 cubic inches and modern humans' 82 cubic inches. If you're old school, the brain cavity holds 28,689 grains of water. Estimated in dried millet seed, the contents equals 53 ounces in Prussian apothecary's weight. Stone tools, artifacts, and animal bones were discovered alongside the remains, indicating a very adaptable lifestyle. Researchers believe Homo juluensis were skilled hunters who relied on wild horses for food. They would have ate every part of the animal, including the meat, marrow, and cartilage, and made clothing out of hides to survive harsh winters, helping them to grow massive brains. Furthermore, the researchers have assigned the enigmatic Denisovan fossils to Homo juluensis, based on a comparative analysis of the current remains. As a result, Denisovans become a distinct subgroup of Homo juluensis. As we have discussed in several videos, the term Denisovan is not universally accepted to apply to all Asian Middle Pleistocene hominins. Comparisons between Homo juluensis and other hominin species highlight their distinct characteristics. They were not related to Neanderthals, but they did have dental similarities with Denisovans, an ancient human population discovered in Siberia. The molars of Homo juluensis and Denisovans were unusually large, with nearly identical bite surfaces. This led researchers to speculate that Denisovans may not be a distinct species, but rather a population within the Homo juluensis lineage. The skull was extremely large and wide, with some Neanderthal-like characteristics. However, it shared traits with both modern humans and Denisovans. Collectively, these fossils represent a new form of large-brained hominin, that was widespread throughout much of Eastern Asia during the late Quaternary, 300,000 to 50,000 years ago, according to their report. The newly named Homo juluensis is based on fossils from the Sujiayao and Xuchang sites in central China, which date back between 220,000 and 100,000 years. Excavators discovered more than 10,000 stone artifacts and 21 hominin fossil fragments from approximately 10 different individuals at Chujiayao. All cranial bones indicate that these hominins had large brains and thick skulls. The four ancient skulls from Xuchang are also very large. Xuchang I, the most complete Homo juluensis of the skulls, 
has an endocranial volume of approximately 1,800 cubic centimeters. That is the size of the largest known Neanderthal skulls and larger than the majority of living people. Xu Chang Tu is less complete, preserving only the back of the skull and is slightly smaller in size, closer to the average for a living person or Neanderthal. Both are wider near the base and do not have the high rounded shape of modern humans. However, the back of the Xu Chang Tu skull is more shaped like Neanderthal and modern human crania than earlier Chinese Middle Pleistocene fossils. As micro CT studies of fossils became more common in the last 20 years, the inner ear has been included in studies of ancient hominin anatomy. However, comparative samples of humans and other fossils required to interpret the fossils are still limited. Nevertheless, some Chinese fossils have an inner ear that is very reminiscent of Neanderthals. The term mosaic is frequently used in fossil comparisons these days, but it simply means that a fossil may share some traits with one group while also sharing traits with others. To sort out the relationships, we must consider which traits are derived, which may provide evidence of a uniquely shared evolutionary history. That's difficult, because the ancestors and more distant relatives of all these fossils may be less well known. Although Homo juluensis is a taxonomically new hominin species, this does not imply that they are genetically isolated. They could have been the result of mating between different types of middle Pleistocene hominins, including Neanderthals, supporting the idea of continuity with hybridization as a major force shaping human evolution in Eastern Asia. Scientific names play an important role in evolutionary biology and anthropology. Naming a new species helps to clarify the fossil record, especially in Asia. Scientific names and terminology is fluid, and some names fade in usage while other names become more popular. East Asia is a rich tapestry of ecological and geological zones that served as a migration hub for ancient hominins. The region's extensive cave systems, lush tropical environments, and shifting sea levels created both challenges and opportunities for early human populations. The existence of Homo juluensis raises important questions about its interactions with other hominin species in Asia. Like many ancient hominins, Homo juluensis would have faced numerous threats to its survival, including competition for resources, environmental changes and predation. The fluctuating climate of the Pleistocene, marked by alternating glacial and interglacial periods, significantly altered the Asian landscape, creating islands from land bridges and vice versa. Such changes could have fragmented populations, leading to genetic drift and ultimately speciation. Some scientists have previously attributed Homo juluensis fossils to Denisovans, a group of ancient humans related to Neanderthals who once coexisted and even mated with modern humans in Asia. Their mosaic of traits suggests a mix of ancestry among various hominin groups who lived in the same regions of Asia between 300,000 and 50,000 years ago. The region was a veritable melting pot of hominins, where species coexisted, competed, or even interbred. While the evidence for Homo julurensis is limited, the human record in Asia is more expansive than most specialists have been assuming. But before you say we can't believe anything Chinese scientists say, consider that the study was co-authored by an American scientist. Every few hundred thousand years it appears that new lineages emerged, weaving in and out of other branches of life before mysteriously disappearing. In the last two decades alone, the human family tree has gone from a carefully pruned tree to a tangled mess, and separating and naming all of the various branches is proving difficult. The various fossils of Homo juluensis come from the face and jaw, and they appear to have classic Neanderthal dental characteristics. Other known hominins, including the Denisovans, do not share certain dental characteristics. It may fairly be supposed that the facial conformation of this species represents the faint vestiges of a primitive type, and which must have given the human visage an unusually savage aspect. Nevertheless, it is becoming increasingly clear that the Eastern Asian hominin fossils contain a greater degree of morphological variation than was previously assumed or anticipated. If anything, the Eastern Asian record is prompting us to recognize how complex human evolution is in general, forcing us to revise and rethink our interpretations of various evolutionary models in order to better align with the growing fossil record.
However, thanks to a growing hominin fossil record, the field of late quaternary Eastern Asian paleoanthropology is in the midst of significant and important change, which is contributing tremendously to how we view and are refining these evolutionary models. Recent research initiatives in China and broader Eastern Asia are showing clearly that multiple hominin lineages were present during the late quaternary. This period, which began 300,000 years ago, was characterized by dramatic climate changes, including glacial periods that caused the extinction of many ancient species. Researchers believe Homo juluensis lived in small, isolated groups, which could have contributed to their vulnerability. When modern humans began migrating out of East Africa around 120,000 years ago, they most likely interbred with and outcompeted indigenous populations such as Neanderthals and Homo juluensis. The study suggests that Homo juluensis evolved through genetic mixing with early humans and adapted to environmental changes during the late Quaternary period. The species' extinction is blamed on a combination of environmental factors and competition with modern humans. The findings challenge long-held models of human evolution, revealing greater diversity among ancient populations in Eastern Asia than previously thought. The study's authors stated that the diversity of fossils from this region exceeds expectations and deepens their understanding of the complexities of human evolution. Paleoanthropologists have spent decades trying to figure out how hominins evolved before the arrival of modern humans, especially between 700,000 and 300,000 years ago, when multiple other early humans existed. However, using catch-all terms like Homo heidelbergensis, has hampered efforts to fully understand our ancestors' evolutionary relationships. The study of hominins, including Homo juluensis, underscores the complexity of human evolution. It challenges the traditional linear model of evolution, highlighting instead a web of interactions, adaptations and extinctions. If confirmed through further fossil discoveries or genetic evidence, Homo juluensis would add another piece to the intricate puzzle of human history in Asia. Homo juluensis, though still a provocative entity, represents a fascinating possibility in the story of human evolution. It symbolizes the untapped potential of Asia to reveal new insights into the adaptability, diversity, and interconnectedness of ancient hominins. Whether Homo juluensis is eventually validated as a distinct species or remains a theoretical construct, its study illuminates the intricate pathways of evolution that brought humanity to its present form. By continuing to investigate the mysteries of Asia's ancient past, we not only deepen our understanding of hominin evolution, but also enrich the broader narrative of human resilience and innovation. Homo juluensis stands as a testament to the enduring legacy of adaptation and survival in the face of environmental and competitive challenges. The primary traditional modern human origins model commonly known as the out-of-Africa or replacement model, holds that modern humans dispersed from Africa and replaced all indigenous populations, leaving no genetic contribution to living peoples. Based on current data, it appears that a new model is the most parsimonious way to explain the origin of modern humans, with modern humans dispersing out of Africa in multiple waves and interacting with smaller indigenous populations on a regular basis. In other words, Modern humans in Eurasia most likely evolved as a result of a combination of dispersal and introgression events. This new model is called the Shuttle Dispersal Model of Human Evolution, and it is backed by one of the leading proponents of the out-of-Africa theory for the last 40 years, Chris Stringer of the British Museum. Thank you for watching. Please share your comments. We like to know your thoughts. And as always, please like and subscribe.